Our Sakura has been primed and given a coat of Tamiya TS42 light gunmetal, and we're starting off painting with Vallejo's London Grey. I'm using colors based on Gundam The Origin Saku 1 colors, and for that I'll be needing a dark grey, which this paint is a pretty good match for. It's not a perfect match, but I only need something in that general ballpark. This is going to be a weathered build, and while I normally experiment with patchiness and opacity when I weather over a metallic surface, I found that London Grey and the light gunmetal underneath are pretty similar and that sort of effect doesn't really show. So instead, I'm focusing on keeping these coats even, using generally vertical motions and keeping the paint thin so I don't get any brush strokes. I do like this grey, and it is one that I use to paint all of my weapons if I'm not keeping them in metallics. London Grey is nice and dark, but it is pretty neutral at the same time. It really doesn't lend itself to the blue or brownish cast that other greys in my collection have. Now I'm using the salt grey. It's darker than the London grey that we used earlier, but it doesn't have too much contrast. I like using it for the Zaku Half Cannon backpack because it gives the impression that it was taken from a different mobile suit, at least for me. This paint is also good for adding a little bit of variation and it does help to break up the grey, if only just slightly. In that respect, it works as a perfect accent color for our grey and I'm also using it to paint all of the half cannon specific parts. The Zaku 1 colors also include a green, so for that I'm using olive green, although this is from Vallejo's Mecha colors range instead of their model colors range. This is a light shade, possibly the lightest shade of green in my collection. Now I found Mecha colors exist in a halfway point between model air and model color in terms of consistency and because they are thin they do have some coverage issues and they like to send in the recesses like a wash at least for the brighter colors this was a bit of an issue since i kept the gray even and i needed to keep the green even as well if i were keeping the gray patchy i would have had no problem with the issues that came with the green and I think it took 3 or 4 coats of the green versus 2 coats of the grey. It should be noted that I am also using a reference for how I'm laying on the green, but I'm only really using it as a general guideline. Copying references in exact detail isn't how I like doing things, and even if I'm painting gunpla to resemble how they appear on screen, I like to do my interpretation with how I paint things. I find that it's just more rewarding and generally fun that way, and the last thing that I'd want to do is lose sleep over a color being slightly off, especially if it pertains towards giant robots. We are starting off weathering by doing some physical chipping. I like physical chipping better than painting on chips because it actually removes material from our surface versus adding material and there really isn't a better way of replicating chipped paint than by actually chipping up your paint. For this I'm using three tools, metal tweezers, 10,000 grit sandpaper, and my hobby knife all in no particular order. With the sander, I'm just sanding edges to achieve general edge wear. I'll use the tweezers to tap on the model to make just general chips and scrapes. And I use the hobby knife for really fine scratches as well as to refine the larger areas of chipping on parts like the edges of panels. Now this is a technique that can be a little stressful since you can definitely go too far and work your way to the bare plastic, but I think the results are worth it and this allows you to get really fine shaping effects, which I find important since our Zaku is in 144 scale and there's nothing that really takes you out of looking at a model more than out of scale shipping effects. I've started to enjoy more subtle weathering effects and I'd rather take a closer look at a model to see weathering and have it surprise me than to see a weathering effect screaming out at me from across the room. Although, that is based on personal preference.
I've applied a light coat of semi-gloss to protect everything, including the chipping effects, since I don't want to remove any paint without first knowing about it. And this also gives us a nice even surface for decals. Without a question, water slide decals are superior to the stickers that you get with most Gunpla kits, although they can be a little tricky to get on right, especially if you want to perfectly line them up with each other, but the results are worth it. And I do make it a point to get a set of decals for every kit that I plan on painting. I'm using the Zaku Half Cannon specific set from Delphi Decal which most notably has red striping for the legs instead of the white stripes that you usually get for these high grade origin Zakus and these decals are great to work with. They're very thin with minimal carrier film which reduces the possibilities of silvering and silvering is when you can see the clear carrier film around your decals and it takes away from the painted on look that we want to achieve. Decals with silvering honestly don't look much better than stickers, and we don't really want that. And just like the paint, the decals are getting chipped up. And for this, I'm only using a hobby knife, but I am using a fresh blade, since I don't want to remove any more material than I intend to. I only let the decals dry for about 4 hours because I had the idea that if they were too dry, the decals might flake off. And while chipping the decals, my main focus is to remove bits where the gunmetal shines through just to make sure that everything blends together. I'm just doing a simple pin wash with black acrylics to show off all the details and add a bit of dimension to the model. These high grade Gundam the Origin Zakus are really nice because they already come with panel lines and other mechanical details out of the box. No additional scribing needed. And although I could just make my own wash, it's just easier to use something pre-mixed because it's already at the perfect consistency. It's thin enough to flow into details, but it's not too thin where it flows out of the details and onto the model's surface, creating nasty tide marks. If you're doing a pin wash yourself and are having a bit of trouble, try applying it over a semi-gloss or glossy surface. It'll help the wash flow into the recesses much easier than it would over a matte surface. For the longest time, I tried applying pin washes over a matte surface and they never turned out right. They would just soak into the model surface instead of into the details where I wanted and for a while, I didn't even attempt this technique just because I thought I would mess it up until I finally discovered a semi-gloss spray which has aided the process much easier and now it's one of my favorite weathering steps. And because a pin wash usually happens with a color that's darker than your base color, usually a dark brown or black in most cases, it does have the added effect of simulating built up dirt and grime as well as highlighting all the details. To show the largest accumulations of filth, we're using oil paints. Oil paints are extremely blendable and they dry very slowly so you have a lot of time to work with them. I'm keeping these oil effects pretty minimal since I haven't used them in a while, but what I'll do first is lay paint in the general area I want the weathering to be in, as well as the general shape I want to keep. And I'll blend the paint in two different ways. The first is the tapping motion to get rid of excess paint, and then I'll use scrubbing motions to refine the final shape. The second is vertical motions, which create streaking effects. And whenever I blend out these oils, my brush has a very small amount of thinner because I don't want to swamp the model with it and crack any plastic. And although the final results are subtle, I do like the little bit of variation they provide. I also use oils for some dusty effects on the feet. But I mixed up a lighter brown for some slight variation, and while blending out this color, I'm only using vertical brush strokes to show how rain and other vertical types of erosion would get rid of excess dust. And after letting the oils dry overnight, I give the model a flat coat. And for the final touch of weathering, I'm doing some gloss speckling. Speckling works to break up the flat surface with a little visual texture, and it helps unify all the different colors together. And here's our finished Zaku. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, whenever that is.